to address the lingering issues in that region? Or is it, are we saying that after the, 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 the amnesty program would have expired, we're having a resurgence of violence and we're talking about another amnesty? What is your appraisal of the, of the situation in that region? When, when, or is it a piece of the graveyard that we have been enjoying right when, now? When pres the late, now late President Yaradua may so rest in peace, proclaim amnesty. He didn't proclaim it in isolation. Agreements were reached at different meetings, dialogues, between government and the stakeholders of the Niger Delta, especially the armed agitators. There was an understanding that there would be concomitant with amnesty critical infrastructural development, human capacity development, etc. In the Niger Delta today, there is little sign of critical infrastructural development. There has been only human capital development in the amnesty program, which is really targeted at the armed agitators. Now, don't forget that it wasn't the federal government alone. I was a member of the Niger Delta Technical Committee. We laid out a very panoramic vision of what was necessary to be done. The state governments, the local governments, the international, uh, multinational uh, companies, oil companies, and even transnational bodies, United Nations, OEU, we're all, they are all stakeholders in the Niger Delta. And we're all supposed to play a part. Have they played that part? They have not. So, so that's Both, the reason why, beginning from the federal government to the least of them, and the most important, the multinational oil companies, none of them has lived up to his responsibility as agreed upon during the lifetime of so in summary in summary are you telling us that the amnesty would have expired and relative peace that we enjoy right now if, if, we, if we can call that peace how be it a peace that is very fragile do you think that this could have a resurgence of violence in that region I, I have said that it's not impossible because if you are concentrating only on armed youths, the retraining, the employment engagement, and uh, empowerment of the former armed youths, you are saying it is good to become an armed youth. If you, however, can bring empowerment, engagement, education to all levels, of the youth of the Niger Delta, then it will be better. But right now, just as in every part in Nigeria, there is nothing being done by any government or anybody because our governments are lazy, our leaders are creatively dormant, and the only program that is truly succeeding in this administration is the post amnesty program. Now, is that why you called, um, you know, the Jonathan's cabinet uh, that you said recently that uh, Jonathan's cabinet, President Jonathan's cabinet, is full of dead wolves? It is full of dead wolves. Who are the dead wolves? I am in the past given names. I one time said uh, Godzilla Rubebe, but thank God he is now, wake, he's woken up, and we are seeing action from so the, the remaining dead we, wolves. I, President um, Ambassador Ashiru shouldn't be there. The foreign, foreign affairs minister. Why? Why shouldn't he be there? What is he doing? What what gains are we going to get from our going into Mali? Apart from increasing our insecurity here. Recently, near your your television studios, they arrested uh, a lot of potential uh, insurgents, terrorists, who turned out to be non-Nigerians, 
mainly people from outside. How did they come into Nigeria? Coming right up.